was born at the White House at Felton in 1952. Uh, quite all my family were born up there. It was a maternity house, I suppose, I don't know. Uh, and then we came home and lived in the high street. Grandfather was a butcher, he was butchering at the top of the high street. Uh, Mum and dad married and moved into the house at the top of the high street, or part of the house. Christmas was a big thing, and all the, all the aunties and uncles used to come for dinner, Christmas lunch, take it in turns, whose house? About 25, and all the kids in a different room with all their games to play with and everything. Yeah, it used to be great fun. What was it like being a little boy in Pensford? Um, oh, it was quite good, really. I mean, it was proper village life. <laughs> you knew everybody. You lived in the centre of the village. Everybody knew you. Christmas, we didn't know anything different, but it was all right. You used to go across the field and get holly and go down into somebody's orchard and get some mistletoe. Family Christmas for me was a little unusual because, of course, um, in the cathedral at Exeter, we stayed until after Boxing Day. So we, we were all boarders in the school, and so we would sing all the Christmas services right through uh, to Boxing Day and only then they'd sort of let us out and we'd go home. So Christmas was a curious business. We had Christmas at school, and then when I got home, I had another Christmas, because uh, I'd missed the family Christmas. Well, I was born um, in Kirby Stephen, which is sort of part of the way between the Lake District and the Yorkshire Dales, farming town. Um, and then because my parents were in the um, hotel business, we moved all over the place. We went to Yorkshire and eventually we ended up in Bath. And then my parents took over the Blathwaite Arms on the top of Lansdowne. Christmases were, well, parents were involved doing things in the hotel and, and particularly in the pub and everything. Um, so it was never just family. There was always staff and, and everybody around and we all had Christmas together. I grew up in Oldlands Common and spent the first 19 years of my life on a farm. Christmas was a really magical time for us. We only got presents at Christmas or on our birthdays. And one, one year was really exciting. The three, my brother, sister, myself had a tape recorder between the three of us. That was my most exciting Christmas I can remember. I grew up in Nepal, uh, Kathmandu, which is the capital city of Nepal. When I was a child, we didn't have Christmas as such, but it, we did have an idea about Christmas. So we knew about 25th of December. Uh, there used to be few shops, you know, all decorated and things. Of course, I'm, I was born in Nepal, but uh, I was born in a village in the plains, uh, uh, which is very different. Uh, culturally, socially, and economically as well um, than Kathmandu and, and the other cities. It's, it's predominantly Hindu and Muslim, uh, uh, and uh, there was no idea of uh, 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 sorry, uh, Christmas as, as such. So uh, I would say I didn't know about it till, till very later in, in my childhood or adulthood. Christmas um, Eve, you'd have a stocking either by the bed or the chair or hang it up by the fireplace. And you, you'd you have a, an orange, an apple, a bar of chocolate, 
a book, a co probably a color, <clears throat> a coloring book, uh, and some pens, and that was that was your lot. That was Christmas. Yeah. Oh yeah. Christmas stocking. Yeah. You just get an apple, nuts, a couple of bars of chocolate. You just, you just think it was ma magic in heaven. Stocking again. Back to school because uh, this is my memory. I don't remember, funnily enough, as a younger child, but before the age of seven, having a stocking. We, I'm sure we did, but certainly at school they made quite a thing of the stockings. And what used to happen was that all the members of staff in the school would contribute something to each of the 20 choristers, and that would go into your school sock. And they were quite generously long school socks in those days. And uh, so you had a, a stocking absolutely stuffed full of very sensible and practical goodies, including a tangerine. I never quite understood why we had a tangerine, but there we are. We would get up early in the morning, my brother and I, and, and we'd have stockings. We always had stockings. And then we always had uh, presents under the tree a bit later, um, depending what parents were doing, really. Um, yes, and then we'd always, we'd always have a late lunch because, again, work. Um, and then we'd, we'd always take the dog out. My father um, grew turkeys for Christmas lunches. As soon as we finished school, we had to go out into the dairy for the week before Christmas and pluck turkeys so that my dad could deliver them on Christmas Eve. Um, that's my main recollection of Christmas and turkey feet soup, which also included giblets. Nobody wanted the feet of their turkeys. So we had turkey feet soup for Christmas, which is delightful if you ever get the chance to try it. In the cathedral, we did have a proper Christmas dinner after we'd sung all the services on Christmas Day. And it was particularly special because we were given a glass of cider. Can you imagine an eight-year-old drinking cider? But there we are. That was, <laughs> that's the way it was back then in 1961 or 62. <laughs> How about that? Folks, give them a big round of applause. What a way to start the Christmas fair. Well done, kids. Well done. Great, great. So, Rubina manages Chew Pharmacy, and uh, I am managing Kensham Pharmacy. We were just looking to start the pharmacy, and somehow we also had to leave here because we had to take the whole lease of the whole building. And by default, we ended up being in Chew Magna. And I think what a, what a, what nice, a fantastic yeah. thing it was for us. The first Christmas we were that was 2015. Yes. Christmas was special for us. The Everybody Christmas. was so welcoming. And when we had our first baby, so um, and Daksha was. Um, Born that and year. the amount of help and like support I received while having Doxia was amazing. Like you know, it, it just felt like back home. We've got two scientists giving you details of those outside doing old schooling. We want to run tomorrow. Okay. Nice house. It's well over hmm, thirty years now since we came here and um, I was heavily into Christmas so I'd always have a whopping great big tree and we had a roaring log fire even if it was warm and, um, and everything was decorated with holly and, and ivy and things. It feels really Christmassy here which you don't always get in lots of places. It's not, um, it's not garish Christmas. And that's how I remember my Christmases being. We didn't have very many presents, um, but we always had a tree. And it was a very simple Christmas, but really lovely. And that's the same feel when you're working here. Before we came to Chew Magna, we were living in Bath, and I'd just done uh, three and a half, just under four years uh, work at Bath Abbey, uh, where, of course, Christmas was a big thing. Um, for the Abbey, loads of carol services. I think 
The average was 21 carol services, which we split between the three members of staff. It's all very big and grand in a, in a vast place like the Abbey, but there is something a little bit more intimate and, and special and involved in a, in a place like this. The first time I left Pensford was when I got married to Di and come over here in 65. Well, I met Di. This was to do with Christmas, basically. I joined the, the Scouts at Stanton Drew. Dr. Hughes and his wife, who lived in Chew, they ran a group called the GTC, Girls Training Corps. One Christmas she had a party for the girls down at the church hall and the scouts were invited. But that's the first time I ever set eyes on her, yeah. I think last year was the greatest Christmas street party we had in Chew Magna for a good few years. And the street festival definitely brings lots of people together. I think Chew Magna comes to its full life. Life, yes. It had a meaning, but when I have doctor now, I feel it's much more meaningful. He learns all this like Christmas plays and things, and he comes and tells us about like you know how Jesus was born. After having him, I enjoy more Christmas. It's fun, he's kids, so I feel like I'm going back to the childhood as well. <laughs> <laughs> the two Magna Society are brilliant and the tree that they put up and the lights that they do and we, we, we still try and help them by decorating the railings, Charlie and I and Shayla because it just looks so nice and so sort of cheers up the village. The tree in the village is just stunning. And the tree on the triangle with the lights on, it just makes you feel really Christmassy. We have a massive Christmas tree outside uh, the village Christmas tree, which like my Dr. son- thinks that's our that, Christmas tree. That's his Christmas tree. <laughs> like he has the biggest, that's his biggest so off during Christmas until New Year. <laughs> One particular Christmas, they did film here for the, I think it's BBC, I'm not sure, The Light of a Turkey. Which was then shown on a boxing day. So that was quite something, being about 20 years of age, being on TV and it being shown on the, on the television the following day. I think my wife ordered a turkey, Boswell. Uh, yes, certainly, sir. Already, boy. Have I heard of the Irish turkey, he asks me. It was looking forward to Christmas. Yeah, that'd be all right. OK, very good, Joel. Bye. Yeah, we generally try and get everything gone now the day before Christmas Eve, if we can. But we do open Christmas Eve, but we're finding that a lot of people would rather finish their Christmas shopping the day before Christmas Eve. And then if Christmas Eve they got to themselves to prepare for Christmas. And if they have forgot something, we're open and they can still come and get it. But it, when we first started, you'd be here till six, seven o'clock at night on a Christmas Eve, still working, which was, it was good fun. You didn't know any different, but I wouldn't want to go back to that. At Christmas in here, we can be completely non-stop, not even managing a drink or our lunch, sometimes until three o'clock in the afternoon. It can be quite tiring for us. Oh, 
<laughs> Logistically, we're not a very large space, so we do have an issue sometimes with the parcel sacks. If we're not moving very much during the Christmas time, it's usually because we physically can't move because we have to stack the parcels around us. <laughs> I always knew Christmas was coming when I walked into the co-op and uh, people would say to me, your busy time coming up, Vicar, uh, as if Easter was a kind of breeze, but you know, <laughs> I know what they meant. And do you have a, a medication ready or not? You may not. Christmas month is definitely recognised as the most busy time for community farmers. It's something happens and everybody wants uh, it sorted before Christmas. It's busy, but it's also a quite joyful time because everyone is wishing uh, uh, Merry wishes Christmas for Christmas and, and like, yeah, everyone so is happy, pretty. everyone is uh, more relaxed. I think everyone is looking forward to it. And I guess we in pharmacy are looking forward to that two days break as well. <laughs> <Two> so <laughs> so uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's busy, but equally it's very uh, lively. <laughs> I like Christmas atmosphere, like, you know, especially like when it's cold, dark. I love that. When I first came here, I was in Nepal right after Christmas and I felt so like, you know, lost and sad. I think I felt a bit dark, like, you know, I missed out something. So I think it's an atmosphere. I, th I, th I think we need that to survive the winter months, oh, <laughs> definitely. And also, like, you know, everybody seems happier. I used to come down for the, the carol service, which I still do. I just think Chu Magna has such a, a happy feel about it. And everybody's friendly. Yep, yeah, yeah, sang in the choir. Yeah, all, all of us used to sing in the choir. Start off up by the organist until you sort of, so say, qualified to sing with the choir and walk down the aisle and sit in the altar stalls. Yeah, so we were all in the choir. Yeah. They didn't keep me for too many years. I don't think I had the best of voices. Yeah. Always liked the Christmas carols. Still do now. Yeah. And being a butcher, I suppose, is uh, while shepherds wash their flocks by night. Christmas is a bit like a process when you're a vicar. You know, you're kind of you're starting thinking about it quite early. Not as early as the supermarkets, admittedly. For, they, they start in September, but but we do have a four-week run-in um, that season called Advent that we uh, we prepare ourselves for Christmas, and then um, from uh, probably a couple of weeks uh, to go, we're thinking about carol services, 
um, and then Christmas Eve, uh, that's where you start to get a little bit of a tingle because there's the, uh, the crib service, which, which I always love. And we have a, a wonderful crib service down in the, in the baptistry area, right in front of the Christmas tree. Absolute mayhem with about 80 children, and it's just, just fabulous. The lockdown has, has been sort of ups and downs, I imagine, which is probably what uh, a lot of people have experienced. I think quite hard on families uh, where they've been split and we, we have two grandchildren and not being able to see them in any sort of meaningful way was very hard, um, but also obviously the, the other side of it for people um, and their employment and their sort of economic prospect. Very, very difficult and challenging time for everyone, I think, not least those who were affected by, by COVID uh, as, as an illness and, and badly affected by it. Many people are stuck home or they can't do things. Uh, fortunately for us, we, we still got a routine to our lifestyle. lifestyle we still got yes. to go to work. Pharmacy is still open. We got to make sure we're still there. So in that sense, our life has continued. Of course, uh, the social aspect and the other aspects of life are on hold. Hello, Steve. Sorry, is that there? First of all, what do you have in the parcel? Um, a box of different teas. Oh, nice. <laughs> a tea chest. A little tea chest for my daughter. <laughs> we expected it to be very quiet. Thank you very much. On the first day of lockdown, we were discussing whether we should cut our hours down, um, maybe open a bit later, close a bit earlier. Um, by day two, we decided actually this was not going to be practical because people were still coming out and lots of people. They couldn't go and visit family or friends, so they were actually posting to family and friends instead. Yes, please, thank you. Just normal. Yeah. The lovely part about it were the children coming in. They'd made pictures and cards to send to families. Um, and it was really old-fashioned in a way. The business is still better than it was, which is a good thing, but Christmas coming could be a different story. People won't be wanting big turkeys this year, which are already being produced by our producers because they're getting them in quite early. Uh, so let's we'll see how things pan out. It's going to be quite a big change, I think, with this COVID because where are the people going to, you know, we're sitting people at 16 at a table for Christmas lunches. I think this Christmas, um, it's going to be difficult. Um, I think 
For families, for big families, I think it's going to be difficult. Um, and I don't know what's going to be happening in the church, whether they're going to open, I don't know. Um, it would be nice if they, if they could, just to let people in, really, just to, even on their own. Um, and I, and I, think, I think the True Magnus Society, knowing them, will probably decorate the village because it'd be nice to have the feeling that it's Christmas, even if you can't all get together. Um, hopefully, people are going to remember the way they were with lockdown, sending parcels to their family. And the comments from people here, how lovely it was to get cards and presents from family. No, which they, they hadn't been getting for a long time and it was really yeah. joyful for yeah. them to receive yeah. a present yeah. and yeah. not a bill or a card yeah. that was handmade by a grandchild yeah. um, and it would be so lovely if that happens at Christmas. Christmas, I think, you know, is a fantastic time of year. Uh -huh. Everyone speaks Christmas Day and wishes you a Merry Christmas, which is something different to the rest of the days of the year. It's a one day off, you can't recreate it. It is quite unique, I think, definitely. Happy days. <laughs> I felt so happy during Christmas, the lights and everything. That's what I can think of people are poorly, runny nose and everything, but happy to run around for like, you know, make uh, put things together. Every time. <laughs> Everybody seems to get quite happy around Christmas. Not on the actual day, because that's usually quite fraught, but working up to it and the carols that get sung and around and the songs, the Christmas songs that you've heard forever. I think it's just a sort of happy time and hopefully this year it will be as well. Simple and magical would be the way I prefer Christmas. I'm not really a commercial person and I don't really want stuff. And, and I prefer it being back to being a simple time, I think. Well, I enjoy the lunch, the Christmas dinner, and the, the, just the general get-together when nobody puts the television on and you all chat between yourselves. That's when you find out more about people. Everything builds up and then everything just sort of settles down. I think it's time for reflection. A time to reflect on what you have done, uh, people you have met. It uh, often brings me the sense that uh, I'm away from my family. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, is one thing that Christmas makes me feel more and more. But hopefully we can, we can still recognise Christmas for what it is and, um, and enjoy it, even though, yes, some families are going to find it quite difficult, uh, particularly if they can't meet together, and that's going to be hard, yeah. I know they used to go around carol singing as well, a group, quite a group from the village. They used to go to the different houses doing the carol singing, and that was always good. In fact, I finished work one night and we were in the bear and the carol singers come in and it was fabulous. There should be more of it. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>